Greetings. I'm Simon Rainier of Lynx Armazada in Kamloops, British Columbia. Uh, I wanted to talk just a little bit about sort of training longswords, specifically entry level training longswords. Um, answering a simple question Should I buy it? Should I not? A um, couple of disclaimers first. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about sparring. Um, sparring should always be done at your own risk, under the supervision of an experienced practitioner, etc., etc. Uh, getting hit with stuff hurts. Don't come blaming me if you get hit with something and it hurts. Make sure you have proper protective gear. Um, okay? Don't be an idiot. Simple rule. Alright, secondly, if you're part of a club or planning on joining a club, talk to them first. Uh, they're going to have a better idea of what you need than I will. Um, I know what my club uses, uh, and I know what uh, you can get if you don't have a club at all. Uh, sadly, we are still in a situation where not everyone has a HEMA club nearby. So, let's talk longswords. First off, if you are on a ridiculously tight budget, we have a Shinai. Uh, these are usually used for kendo, uh, but they do make semi-decent longsword simulators. I've sparred with these many times, and they work just fine. Uh, if you're paying more than 20 bucks for them, you're probably paying too much. You can get them off Amazon, I think in a two-pack even, so that makes it extra convenient. Um, they don't flex at all, so the thrust can be a little bit, uh, a little painful. Um, but in terms of fighting, they're a great way to get started. Uh, they can hit kind of hard. I recommend, uh, at the very least, the cross gloves and a fencing mask at the absolute minimum. Um, extra gear is always better. Um, yeah. So, should you buy it? Yeah, if you're on a tight budget, why not, right? If you just want to mess around with friends and, and smack each other, this is a good place to start. Secondly, we have the Cold Steel Hand and a Half Trainer. These are terrible. Um, they are ridiculously heavy. Uh, they feel not at all like swords. They don't interact with each other like swords. Uh, they are uh, bizarrely pointy for a training weapon. They have almost zero flex. It feels more like a sword in my hand if I hold it backwards, which is bizarre. Uh, they hit too hard. Um, yeah, awful things. Should I buy it? God, no. I cannot think of a single redeeming feature on these. Um, they're about 40 bucks and not even worth that. Maybe if they were like five. I don't know. All right, next up we have the Red Dragon line. These were formerly called the Rawlings line. I don't think they are anymore. Um, most people still seem to call them that, though. Uh, they are uh, plastic. They are nice and flexible. They're relatively soft. Uh, they don't hurt too badly when you get hit with them. Uh, again, at the very least, you should be wearing lacrosse gloves and a fencing mask uh, if you're doing any kind of actual sparring. And good general rule of thumb, don't hit anyone harder than you want to be hit, right? Simple, simple stuff. Um, whenever we spar in my club, especially if you're fighting someone new, we have a rule of you calibrate first, where you hit the other guy and they say, yeah, that was okay, or ow, and the ow is obviously bad. Um, these will run you probably around 80 or 90 bucks, uh, depending on where you pick them up from. Uh, the really cool thing about them is you can swap out the bits. So, example, we have the other pummel. Um, the This one, by the way, is the, I think they call it the bastard sword. It's a single-handed sword uh, blade with the extended grip. Uh, the long swords, I find, the one they call the long sword with the longer blade, I find to be a little floppy. Um, so these, I think, are, are better. They're not amazing training tools, uh, but they definitely get the job done. So again, you swap out. Look, I have a single-handed sword. Or I have the basket hilt. So that's three separate swords for uh, minimal extra cost. Um, again, great for messing around with friends, uh, not necessarily um, for uh, really serious practitioners, but they're a great place to get started, especially if you're on kind of a budget. Um, should you buy them? Yes, if you're on your own. Uh, I don't know of any clubs that use them as sort of their standard training sword. Uh, so keep that in mind. Having said that, they are a lot of fun to play with and uh, you don't need a lot of gear to use them. Next up we have, for the synthetic, my personal favorite. 
Uh, this is the Black Fencer uh, line of synthetic. Uh, this one's the Longsword, and these are fantastic. I love these swords. Um, they feel great when you're just swinging them around. They're really good for solo practice. Uh, they do hit pretty hard, so uh, gear is highly, highly recommended. Um, not quite as hard as a steel, but close enough that you're still going to want to uh, protect yourself. Having said that, um, I do a lot of light sparring with uh, some of my more senior students, uh, and all we wear are uh, gloves uh, and a mask. So, and we're not we're not hitting each other, and they're people I trust not to you know lose control and, and smack me one good proper. Um, they have a whole bunch of different models, and they do custom versions as well, uh, which is really cool. They're a little pricier. Um, here in Canada, you'd be hard priced to get them for much under two hundred bucks, unfortunately. Uh, so the cost is slightly prohibitive, but at the same time, um, great place to start. We use these in class all the time, uh, and these are sort of the, the standard loner sword in my club. Um, Alright, so there's also the, uh, from Purple Heart Armory, there's also the uh, Penti synthetic line, uh, and I haven't actually had a chance to handle one of those yet. Um, from what I hear, they're pretty much on par with the Black Fencer. Uh, roughly the same cost, roughly the same same handling. Um, the reason why I went with the Black Fencer over the Penti line uh, for my club is honestly just because the Black Fencer is prettier. Uh, and I figure if you're a sword fighter, aesthetics matter. Because um, we are a vain and shallow bunch. All right, next up we have the Hanwei uh, Hand and a Half Trainer. Uh, this is what I would really refer to as a true bastard sword rather than a long sword. It's a little bit shorter than most of the, the other training tools. Um, it's got this kind of cool triple fuller design. Uh, keep the uh, weight nice and light. Uh, you'll need a, a blunt on the end probably because it, it does, it is a little bit pointy. Um, this is an older model, by the way. The newer models, pommels, aren't quite so uh, goofy looking. Uh, they're a little smaller. Uh, it does make the sword heavier, feel heavier in the hand, because it's more uh, weighted towards the tip, which I'm not a fan of. I kind of like the big pommel. Um, I think for a training tool, it makes a lot of sense to, to keep the weight as far away from the back as possible. You can spar with these. Uh, you will need full protective gear, jacket, rigid arms, knees, whatever. Um, we'll talk about that all another time, I think. Um, they are not bad, except for that. That usually happens about a week after you buy them, and just kind of sticks with you. That's okay, though. It doesn't really affect the handling at all, and if I were so inclined, I could probably fix it. Um, should you buy this one? Honestly, probably not. Uh, it's not bad, but I can't see myself ever buying more of these. Um, it works for what it is, and if it's all you can get, sure, go for it. It'll it'll stand up all right. Uh, part of the problem with Hanway, though, is their quality control is not always the best. Hello, plane. We're right on the flight path. That's okay, though. Um, so the quality control is not amazing. Uh, this one has lasted me a really long time. Um, Go away, plane. You're a bigot. Put this weight on that. Do -do -do -do. And we're good. Um, but sometimes they just kind of break, uh, and that's that's that is what it is. Um, running about three hundred bucks, so you're stepping up in price from the the black fencers. Um, but for a first steel sword. It was my first steel uh, longsword trainer. Um, it's not a bad option, but again, there are better options on the market. For example, this is the Hanway Tinker. Uh, I put some custom fittings on this, which is one of the really cool things about the Hanway Tinker line, is they uh, have a nut pommel, so you just unscrew them. You can strip the blade if your blade gets too damaged, which it will. Um, you can replace the blade and replace the fittings, uh, which is always really cool. Um, this sword I really like in a lot of ways. Uh, it feels better in the hand than a sword at this price point has any business feeling. It'll run you around three or four hundred bucks, so it's not cheap, cheap. 
Having said that, it feels like a seven or eight hundred dollar sword when you're swinging it around. So that's really cool. Uh, disadvantage though is the steel, uh, I believe, is very soft uh, and the edges are very thin. So consequently, I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, the edges get chewed up really fast and really badly. Um, I file this down regularly, but it's still kind of like a saw blade. I don't really use it for sparring anymore. Um, wish I could, because it feels great in the hand. I love this sword. Uh, they have sharp blades for it as well, so you can swap out a sharp blade, and for an extra hundred bucks, you have a, a trainer that matches your, your sharp, which I think is a great feature. Uh, should you buy this one? Yeah, maybe. Uh, they work best if you're uh, in a match set, so only using it against other tinkers. Um, it, it limits the damage and be aware that every every so often you're going to have to replace uh, the blade every year or so uh, is probably realistic if you're not using it too hard. They are, again, Hanway, so occasionally they just kind of fall apart. Again, I've had this one for a very long time and it's done me great, but um, sometimes they just don't hold up to uh, some of the other swords on the market. But good option all in all. Now. The best choice for the trainer swords is probably going to be this one. This is the Purple Heart Armory uh, Technique Fetter, I think they call it. Um, it's not really a fetter, it's more of a blunt uh, in that it's sword shaped. Uh, the point of balance is really close to the guard, so it doesn't hit as hard as uh, a proper sword would. Uh, this is the wheel pommel version. Um, there's also sort of a, uh, I think they call it the pear pommel or the scent stopper pommel version as well. Uh, most people seem to prefer that one. I really like this one. Huge fan of wheel pommels. Just my preference. Um, the edges of the blade are really thick, which, which is good. Uh, it means they're not going to get damaged as much and they're not going to hit quite as hard. Um, and the tip is rolled, which is also good for for safety. So uh, this they sell are selling now for about 200 US. Factor in the exchange, however, however it happens to be living here in Canada. Woohoo! Um, but they are great value for the money. We put this through some fairly heavy sparring. It's held up great. From what I hear, there are legal in tournaments or some tournaments anyway, which is also cool. Um, speaking personally, I'm not a huge fan of sort of the the feather shirt. Um, I like my training tool to uh, be as close to a sword as I can safely make it, and I think that the fetters are just getting too far away from that. Um, so I want it to look like a sword, and this very definitely looks like a sword. Um, very good value for the money. Uh, they're relatively new on the market, uh, so we don't necessarily know how they hold up long term, but for the price, that's fine. Um, they are uh, very good quality, love it. Uh, the one sort of downside I can say about this is it feels slightly dead in the hand. A really good quality sword, or even like the Tinker, you pick it up and it feels alive. It feels like it wants to move on its own, and this sword just doesn't quite have that. But again, for the price, 200 US, um, you can't really ask that necessarily. Uh, but hey, I like this sword. This is what um, a couple of my students have. This is what I have, obviously. Uh, and it's what I'm going to be uh, keeping on hand in my, in my club. Um, and that's about it for sort of the base entry-level swords. If you want something a little better, that's another time. Um, so for first swords, uh, most of these options are pretty good. Again, cannot say enough. Good things about the Purple Heart line. Um, I'll provide links and links to all social media and stuff as well. Uh, I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, so bear with me. And say bye, Saber.